thank you for very elaborate introduction. Uh, Sri Indramani Tripathi Saab, who is the Municipal Commissioner and the, of the Lucknow Municipal Corporation and the Chief Executive Officer of the Lucknow Smart City Limited. Srivas Jaipuriya, who is the Vice Chairman of the Seth Hemar Jaipuriya School of Jaipuriya Institute of Management. And uh, two persons, Chetan Anand and uh, Arpit Gupta, who are from the Elites Technomedia Private Limited. And I don't have your name here, but thank you so much for great introduction. So first of all, uh, <laughs> my name is uh, Kripa Shankar. And as the introduction says, uh, it's definitely amazing and is interesting. Ex former deputy director IIT Kanpur and ex vice chancellor AKTU. Very well uh, said. And I do not know what's the difference between former and ex, but anyways, I think we'll carry along with that. Uh, I must uh, add to this introduction that all my life I have been a teacher, teacher at IIT Kanpur. And uh, IIT Kanpur are such institutes are not the schools, the way we understand here. They are the processor of the schooled uh, kids or schooled uh, uh, adults for that matter. So we are able to see the, uh, the consequence of uh, how the schooling has been done of children during their time. So as such, I do not have the experience of being a school teacher, nor running an institute, nor running a school, uh, but only uh, you know, just as an intermediate or maybe the terminal processor of such kind of persons. So please listen from that point of view. A little bit of personal thing also should be mentioned, I think. I grew up in a village school. I went to a village school which had the four walls but no roof. So I had all the classes except the rainy season classes because those days the classes were not held because everyone was asked to go home because of the rains. And those days rains were more than the rains that we are having these days. And then grew up again uh, to go to the junior high school, high school in UP, we, that's the name that we have, intermediate board. And the place where I was born is Varanasi. And then went to one very famous college at that time, um, Queen's College of Varanasi. And that was the year that I had uh, some regular shoes also using it. And like that, mechanical engineering from Manaras Engineering College, Yamtek from IIT Kanpur, and then uh, PhD uh, in operations research from Cornell University. After a month or so, then I was told at Cornell that this is very tough Ivy League school. I didn't know earlier that there is something like uh, Ivy school. And then after that, I returned to IIT Kanpur and started teaching and became former deputy director as today. Uh, so I have lived in some sense, if you see my uh, most of the career in uh, IITs. It was very fortunate for me to come out of IIT for three years, little more than three years, to become the vice chancellor of a university, and very rightly you said, the world's largest technical university, that is the, those days it used to be Uttar Pradesh Technical University, became Gautam Buddha Technical University, and then again became UP Technical University, and after I left, it became Abdul Kalam Technical University. So that's what is my uh, brief addition to this. Coming to Uttar Pradesh and looking at the technical education was an eye-opener. In other words, if somebody has all throughout been taught and has taught at an elite place, let me be a little louder on this, like IITs or IIMs for that matter, are like that, there are many elite schools also, would be not knowing much about the society as it has happened with me. I came to know little more about Uttar Pradesh. Had I not been the vice chancellor of the Uttar Pradesh Technical University, I would have missed a great 
part of my learning uh, about the real society. So what is happening here, particularly about the technical education? Technical education, as per definition, is uh, 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 Dr. Jagdish Gandhi is here. I had known him. And uh, welcome, sir. <laughs> a uh, very uh, important guest at the Raj Bhavan, uh, the governor's place. I have met him several times there. Uh, this elitism is one issue in our society, be it IIT or be it anything else. Since education, unlike any other community, does not belong to a particular class, but it belongs to all, poor, rich, are now like that. Therefore, <laughs> one of the issues which remains for the education, school as well as higher studies, higher education, is that we are talking about something for the masses. So 20 crores, 22 crores population of Uttar Pradesh, when I became the vice chancellor, this must have gone up a little bit, with 750 nearly the technical institutions and only one technical university in the whole state, 75 districts. But remember, these 75 districts collectively contribute to the growth of the nation through UPTU much more than so-called elite IIT and IIT Kanpur particularly, I'll say, which also happens to have its place in uh, uh, UP. That's the fact. The number of persons who are involved with different organizations in the country, UPTU has contributed much more than IIT Kanpur. But yet, we definitely, for the reasons very obvious, we do take pride in being associated with IIT Kanpur in whatever manner that you know, is possible. Now, this has to be understood, understood at the school level as well, that we need to care, we need to worry about what you call underprivileged. That's our definition of underprivileged. Uh, and perhaps take some of the lessons uh, from uh, you know, our older way of education, not only in our country, but all over the world. And there is no need to become, undergo any kind of jingoism that our, you know, this culture is great, that culture is great. The point is that we need to create something not for the consumption of, of uh, tomorrow, day after. We need to create at the school level, the citizens of the society for Next, I do not know how many years, I'll just put it in finite number of years. So the life cycle of a output of a school is not to be measured as the life cycle of a mobile phone or a tablet or you know, any building or any airport or anything like that. It has an infinite life. That's one thing. The second thing is that sometimes, uh, you know, uh, And particularly presently, we hear about the concern of the government, the head of the government, about people being able to have the employment or the jobs, or in other words, they should be able to earn the breads. It's so simple. And one way to earn the bread is that we should be able to transform the resources into the products and our services, which will be taken by the society. And we should be able to use the resources. The transformation of the resources, if it happens in India, then Indians are employed. If it happens outside India, then outside Indians are employed. So simple. I would like to draw your attention that somehow, proportionate transformation of the resources in the country is not proportionate, is not up to the mark. And this is why uh, we have uh, even very simple and very popular 
uh, instruments which we generally use in our hands 24, 25 hours in 24 hours is not created or is not made here. This, who is responsible for this? Because they have to earn the bread, they have to be given the employment. Well, one simple thing before you speak anything, I'll I confess, I will propose it. IITs are responsible for this. But remember, the string does not begin at IIT, does not stop at IIT. The string goes even to the school level. The creativity in the human being cannot be and should not be taught at only IIT level at the age of 17 years. The creativity in the person is to be inculcated at, at the level when the child is born, more or less. So here, a syn synergy between the schools, parents, and the higher education appears to be our main agenda. Somehow, we cannot say that after the education, irrespective of the education, we all go through the coaching institute, then some are selected, some are selected, and then there are some societies also, those who do not get selected. Of course, in the process, see, we have to stop it. And one way to stop and bring the uh, order in the society is to, uh, I think uh, Mr. Jaipuria said very rightly, we have to understand the schooling. I would even propose that our schooling, under, understanding about the schooling is much more important than understanding about IIT systems, very frankly. And those who are socially responsible, citizens of the country, definitely will turn out to be very socially uh, responsible, uh, BTECs or the MTECs or the PhDs from IITs and IIMs without any default. It cannot be expected that only this institute is responsible to turn the whole society. That process is to start earlier. And I'm glad that today, while there are so many parents, so many members of the society who get so much you know, worried about IIT, very few in number, 23 in number, and total number of seats being so limited. I would rather imagine that in time to come, Conventions like this, the con conferences like this, there should be a longer queue in front of such kind of things than in front of IITs and IIMs. Maybe a wishful thinking, uh, maybe a thinking from a retired person, uh, but whatever it is, my feeling is that our concern, the social concern about the schooling should get the right place and some of the classes, some of the institutes which are receiving that, I think should understand that you do not deserve it, somebody else deserves it. And that is uh, here. And a uh, little bit about the meaning of the schooling, I will simply give a small example that uh, uh, I was the deputy director at that time, um, some 10, 15 years ago, and you know, as at the time of admissions, parents also accompany to see the buildings and the roads of IITs and see that that's where the child is going to be there for next four years. And many parents don't return also after the first day because they think that now the child is being very nicely washed, ironed and packaged to be ready to go to you know, anywhere uh, on the earth. So they don't care as a matter of fact. And one of the ladies, mother perhaps, asked that how my uh, child, uh, my, my my uh, son, rather in this particular case, can be an IS officer. Because a lot of IIT graduates uh, uh, were the IS officers before that. And the fact is that this is what is the strange thing in the, in the society. You are a BTEC training institute. The question being asked to you is that my child wants to become this. And by all means, the person has the right to take the admission in such a school which does not do any IS training, IS coaching. It teaches only technology or engineering for that matter. So let's be ready for this. That society will pose different kind of expectations, very unrelated expectations. And we need not answer the way I answered that lady at that time. And I had to say that, ma'am, the contract between you and us is for technology, BTEC, and not for IS. 
This is a very rude answer. We have to entertain the society and we have to now cater to the society. If the need be, we will change ourselves or we will change our what we call syllabus or the curriculum. One last thing that I would like to mention here is that many of us feel that by giving the history lessons, by giving the physics lessons and the chemistry lessons, our job has been nicely done. Perhaps yes. The examinations are held, the results are out, and then we have a lot of public communication saying that we are doing the best, we are doing the best, we are the best, I am the best, and stuff like this. The fact is that education starts after all these advertisements. I think Mr. Jaipuriya said very correctly that we have to produce the learners who can learn, continue to learn, even after the degree has been handed over in their hands. That is what we have to look for. And accordingly, we have to design the syllabus and we have to design the pedagogy, the way we should do it. And of course, uh, not boasting, but uh, I must uh, say that IITs, and particularly IIT Kanpur, uh, definitely has this that people who have studied there do continue learning even after the convocation is over. So like this, um, uh, I told you that you have to take it with a little bit of pinch of salt also, because this is my, my uh, interpretation. Similarly, I'll say that a school, child, school output should be the one who should not finish his schooling after getting, the, uh, getting out of the school, but should continue to learn. So with this hope, I thank you so much for having invited me here. And uh, I touched upon some of the issues which were very heartfelt. And you gave an opportunity to vent out some of the issues. Thank you so much. Hello.